and thank you for joining me. I'm the Code Pilot. This episode is part of the Collision series, and in it we'll be exploring pixel perfect collision using Pygame's mask functions. And I'll be explaining a little bit about how it works. But as usual, let's have a look at what the code will look like when we run it. The blob thing in the middle of the display surface represents an obstacle that when collided with changes the colour of the blob at the mouse position from green to orange. The purpose of Pixel Perfect Collision allows the coder to accurately determine if one sprite has overlapped another. For example, if the player's sprite has collided with the bullet or an enemy. In this instance, we'll be testing for collision between two blob things because it's mega fun and easy to implement. Remember, all the scripts used in these vids are available on my Google Drive, so grab the link from the description, download the template and join me in some coding. Here we go. So before we get into the main program loop, we need to load in some images to use as sprites. The first we'll call Obstacle, this is what it looks like, and yes, I did draw it on Microsoft Paint. The shape of the obstacle should allow us to move around it and maybe, or maybe not, trigger a collision. The next thing we need to do is to create a mask of the obstacle image we've just loaded. To do this, we call Pygame's mask function and pass the obstacle image variable to it. What this function does is it creates an image using bits. One represents part of the image and zero represents transparency. These ones and zeros are then grouped together in 8-bit chunks we all know as bytes. Towards the end of the video, and if you're interested, we can see how this works in a bit more detail. Next, we need to get the rectangular dimensions of the image so we can place the obstacle directly in the center of the display surface. We do this by deducting half of the obstacle's width from half the display surface's width and half the obstacle's height from half of the display surface's height. The half width and height values are located in the center array of the get rect object. Index zero is half of the width and index one is half of the height. So following those centralization rules, OX and OY variables now contain the coordinates to place the obstacle in the center of the display surface. Now we need to load in two more images. These images are both the same shape but a different color, green and orange, and represent the blob sprite. We'll also store them in separate variables. The blob is displayed at the mouse position and changes color from default green to orange on collision with the obstacle. Sorry, I'm a slow typer, so hang on while I catch up. Like with the obstacle sprite mask, we also need to create a mask for the blob, and because the orange and green images are the same shape, it doesn't matter which we use to make it. We need a mask for the blob too, so we can test the blob shape against the obstacle shape and determine if a collision has taken place. Here, I'm getting the blob's dimensions and storing them in the blob rect variable, but it's not included in the script, it's just because I got overexcited. And lastly, the blob color variable tells the blip function which image to write to the display surface. Right, well that's the setup bit done. Let's go into the main loop and have some fun. Yay! Anyway, as I mentioned before, the blob will be positioned at the mouse pointer. So in order to do that, we need to call Pygame's mouse class function getPos. And we'll split the resulting coordinate values into MX and MY. The offset variable is the result of deducting the obstacle's coordinate from the blob's coordinate and gives us the location of the blob relative to the obstacle. Let's have a quick look at what this looks like in graphical terms. Here we can see the dude from Rainbow Islands and a white ball. If both the dude and the ball were in the center of the display surface and we deduct the dude's coordinate from the ball's coordinate, we get an offset of 0, 0. Let's change the location of the ball and have another look. Here the ball now has an x value of 973 and a y value of 553 and the dude stays in the same place. Deduct the dude from the ball and the offset is 1313. One more time, ball x is 957, y is 553, dude in the same place. Deduct dude from ball, offset minus 3, 13. Well that's enough of that rubbish, let's go back to the code. Back when we set up the images, we created two mask variables, obstacle mask and blob mask. Each of these variables is an instance of Pygame's mask class and as a function called overlap. This function allows you to test whether a target's pixels have overlapped the source's pixels. The source is the instance of the mask class we call the overlap function from, and the target is the first parameter. We also need to pass the offset variable we created above to it, 
so that the function can determine if the image's rectangles intersect, and if so, proceed to test for pixel overlap. The overlap function returns a location of the first pixel to overlap a source's pixel. This can also be used to test for true and false. True for collision, false for no collision. And here, if result, i.e. if collided, then change the blob colour to orange, otherwise keep it green. Now, we just need to blit the obstacle and blob images to the display surface. I'll just speed this bit up as we all know how to blit by now. If you don't, then have a look at this video. The link should appear now. Well, that's the script complete. Let's run this sucker and see if it works. Usually when I run them at the end, there's a squillion syntax errors. Wish me luck. Bang! And the dirt was gone, it works. As you can see, the blob changes colour when it collides with the white obstacle. And just before I end this video, I did say I'd mention a little bit about how Pygame's mask class works. So if you'd like to stick around for that, then great. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. The mask class needs at least one image to do its job. So for this explanation, I'm going to use my favourite character, the Rainbow Islands dude. He's a bit small, so let's blow him up a bit. That's better. Now let's chop him up into pixels. Excellent. Right, so what mask does is it creates a black and white image. White makes up the image and black makes up the transparent background. So let's do that to this dude now and see what it looks like. Brilliant. Now that we have just two colours, we can also say that one represents the white colour and zero represents the black colour, like this. If you're familiar with binary, you know that a computer bit is made up of ones and zeros, exactly what this image is made up of right now. A byte is made up of 8 bits, so you can imagine this image, if it was a string of 576 bits, to be just 72 bytes in length. Let's load in a second image and convert it to a mask. So the image will be our bullet, we'll convert it to pixels and binary, there we go. So now we have effectively got two instances of Pygame's mask class, the character and the bullet. To test for overlap, the mask's overlap function performs a bitwise operation on the bytes within the two images. Here you can see the bitwise operator is AND, and here are the results of the three possible tests, two of which generate zeros. When testing a byte with the AND operator, if a bit in the source's byte is 1, and a bit in the target's byte at the same location is also 1, then what is generated is a 1 in the result, also at the same position. That means, in terms of the overlap function, if the result of an AND test between a source's image's byte and a target image's byte is greater than 0, then there's a collision between the two. Let's have a look at this diagram. It'll help to visualise, I think. So as the bullet flies towards our rainbow dude, it enters the area in which the overlap function should start its bitwise scan of the bytes between the two images. The red area of the bullet isn't tested because it's outside the boundary of the source. The grey shading represents a 1 in the mask. The result of this scan can be seen in the numbers. They're all 0, because no test between 1 and 1 has occurred. It's either being 1 and 0, or 0 and 0, which generates a 0 in the result just like you can see here with this arrow. If we have a look at an actual collision, you can see the results of 1 and 1. This will tell the overlap function to stop scanning and return the location of that result bit. So that's the end of the explanation of how mask works and that's it from me and this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Remember all the scripts and images featured in this video are available from my Google Drive. Links in the description. And if you have anything to ask, please do so. I love hearing from you. See you for the next video.